So this is going to be a rather short video where I'm going to show you how to set up the OPC UA server on the S7 1500 PLC. So we have an empty TR project, let's add a new device. I will be using uh, PLSIM Advanced to simulate this because it's possible to simulate OPC UA with, with PLSIM Advanced. Uh, but if you're using a, a normal PLC, a hardware PLC, that's fine as well. So I'm going to add myself a PLC, firmware 2.9 is fine. Okay, so if you ever used V17 before, you know that now this new uh, PLC, PLC security settings pop-up got added, uh, where you should be setting up passwords for your PLC, etc. Uh, I'm going to skip it this time, uh, just for, uh, for ease of configuration because I want to focus on the OPC UA settings. So we have our PLC added. Uh, as you can imagine, it has absolutely nothing here in program blocks. Uh, and yeah, let's maybe add a data block just so that we know that when the OPC UA server is exposed, we actually have access to the data that we want to access. So I'm adding a data block, calling it data block underscore one. How creative of me. Uh, and I'm just going to be adding myself some, some variables. There you go, maybe a real here, um, int here, whatever it might be. Cool. Uh, obviously, normally you would have, you know, entire PLC program providing some variables that you are really interested in. I just want to show you how to access some variables that might exist in your PLC. So, if you go to the properties, so right, uh, right, right, right click on the CPU properties or another place, devices and networks, uh, go to your PLC, select the PLC, go properties. It's exactly the same place. Uh, you have obviously a list of all different properties. One of them is OPC UA. If you scroll down, you have a tick box. So you just take activate OPC UA server. Uh, it will provide you with a security node so that you are sure that you know what you're doing because you will be exposing some data uh, to whoever might have access to this network. Then depending on your requirements, you can either leave it uh, unprotected. So if you scroll down here, you can scroll, scroll, scroll. You can enable guest authentication, which basically means that anyone will have access to this. Or you can start doing things like uh, username and password authentication where I can manually add a new user. I'm actually going to change the name of this user to Sigmatic. Yeah, so if I leave it like this, I will have uh, username and password authentication, but I still have guest authentication, so anyone would have access to this data. So I'll advise against this, maybe disable the guest authentication. Although, if you have any problems with OPC UA, then for troubleshooting, I would say enable guest authentication and make sure you can connect uh, with guest authentication because if you can't connect this way, then most likely any other way won't work. So just, you know, go to the basics, guest authentication and make sure that this works for you. Other things that we have here in the settings, if we go back to, to here, you can actually enable user management via project security settings. So if you want to have uh, central users uh, for, for your PLC, so rather than setting them up down here, you want to set it centrally via user management of your project, uh, you can do this as well. But we'll just leave it like this. Uh, with version 2.9 of the OPC UA server, alarms and conditions were enabled as well. So this actually allows you to expose PLC uh, alarms, things like uh, program alarms as well via the OPC UA server. So a very, very cool functionality. Uh, GDS push is for you using external tools to load certificates onto your OPC UA server. Now this is the important setting, I guess. Enable standard schematic server interface. So what this setting means is if you take this, it's going to create namespace free on your OPC UA server and basically expose everything to your OPC UA server. Everything that has a tick here will be exposed and available via an OPC UA server. Now, if you don't want to do this, uh, you can disable this option. So again, going properties, OPC UA, and you can just disable this option. 
but then you will need to go uh, to OPC UI communication here, uh, to server interfaces and manually create uh, a server interface. I'll just show you how you do this. So add new server interface, uh, give the server interface a name, and now you can either do it manually on ba or based on a companion specification. So if you have a companion specification, you can select it, load an XML file, and then just map some variables across. But if you want to just manually say, I want to expose these things, then you just create yourself a server interface. Uh, and basically what you can do is you can just uh, drag and drop some variables here. And now this variable will be exposed under this server interface. As you may have noticed, I left the, uh, the standard semantic namespace checked. So if I leave it like this, I should have actually two namespaces, namespace three and this uh, custom namespace, uh, my, my custom server interface. So we should be able to actually see both. Going back to the properties, uh, what else is there of interest? Okay, it's a server interface. This is actually quite important. So the port. If you want to use any OPC UA client to connect to your OPC UA server, you will need to know the port of your OPC UA server. By default, TIA assigns 4840 to the OPC UA servers. Yeah, in most situations, just leaving it is fine. Then you have things like max session timeout, max number of sessions, etc. Uh, these again, the defaults are most likely fine. Uh, the sampling and publishing intervals are, are quite interesting things because um, sometimes you are interested in doing registered reads, you set them to be at let's say 200 milliseconds, but it doesn't work for you. Why it doesn't work? Uh, because the minimum uh, intervals set here are, are above this value. And you can, if you actually hover over this um, and hit F1, oh, sorry, hover and hit F1, this will give you a detailed explanation uh, what this is and, and how to change it. Uh, but yeah, just to be wary, uh, these things have to do with the registered reads, not the normal reads, and, and might be preventing you from achieving uh, low uh, read intervals and you might need to adjust these settings if you want to go uh, below one second. Okay, then we have security policies. So if we are using certificates, then you need to uh, make sure that whatever security policy you are using uh, is activated here. If you are using no security, then this means that you will be able to connect to the server uh, without any, any certificates. If you want to prevent this uh, because you are so security aware, then you will uh, deactivate the security policy uh, and uh, load the uh, necessary certificates. And if this is of interest, I guess we could make another video specifically on the certificates around OPC UA. Again, user authentication, we went through this. We added ourselves a, a custom user. And here in diagnostics, uh, you can just define whether you are interested in publishing, uh, publishing this data around diagnostics. And that's about it, you know. Uh, go with OK, download this to your PLC, Oh, I need to change the PLC uh, IP address. My PLC is on 5028. So I go to Ethernet address, change this to match my PLC, and this should be fine. But if you go to now to download it, it will throw you an error saying you don't have a license. Uh, because for OPC UA on the SN1500 is a licensed option, and based on the size of your PLC, uh, you should select the correct um, license size. So I define my PLC to be a 1511, which means I need an OPC UA 1500 small license. Uh, this is something that you buy as a paper license. Um, so yeah, just contact your distributor, get yourself a paper license for the size of your PLC. And then here you need to say, okay, yes, this is the license that I have. Long story short, if you select Anything that is of the, the right size or bigger, it's fine. If you have, let's say, a medium PLC and you select a small license, then obviously it's not fine. So, okay, uh, let's just compile it to make sure that it's all good. Yeah, looks fine. And yeah, let's now download this uh, to our PLC. So, I'm using uh, PLC Advanced, so it'll be downloading via the virtual Ethernet adapter. And 
command load. Okay, we are going to reset the module. Uh, it will restart the LPC away server as well. Ooh, download. Okay, that's interesting. Download those. Oh, my PLC. Yeah, should be fine. Should be fine. Um, let's go to properties and let's make sure that we support simulation during block compilation because I'm using a simulated PLC and let's try again. Yeah, okay, this is fine now. Let's start the module. Okay, so I downloaded the PLC, I enabled the OPC OA server. How can I test this? Maybe you have a client software of some kind, a high level system that should be subscribing to uh, this data, grabbing it over OPC UA, and it doesn't work. So, how would you go about troubleshooting? For me, my favorite troubleshooting tool is UA Expert, it's a free OPC UA client. So I use it quite often to just make sure that, yeah, everything works fine and I can actually access my OPC UA server. So I have UA Expert installed, but if you just Google it, uh, you will go onto the, uh, these guys' website. They have some, some products that they sell, but if you register on the website, uh, you can actually download the UA Expert client uh, free of, of charge. Okay, yeah, I don't want to look for these. Now, how do I add a new server? How do I check if everything is working fine? Just go with the plus, custom discovery, 192.168.50.28, I think is what I gave it, port 4840. Well, let's browse for this. As you can see, it found our PLC. So this is a very good sign. It means, yeah, we can reach the PLC uh, and there is an OPC UA server running there. So if you get to this stage, it means it's good and any future problems will be around wrong certificates, wrong user details, uh, wrong policy setup, etc. So here, as you, as you remember, I left none, none uh, enabled so that I can log in without certificates because I didn't want to focus on, on certs. I just wanted to show you very quickly how to set up the OPC UA server and I disabled the guest login, which is why it now asks me for username and password. So I can provide username, I can't provide password at this stage because it will ask me every time I want to connect, it will ask me for the password. So now on the left hand side, under my project, it added this server and if I click connect server, it will add, ask me for the password that I defined in TIA. Okay. Because I didn't load the certificates, it says, hey, this certificate is untrusted. Do you want to trust it or not? Uh, I want to trust it. I'm happy with this. But normally, I would advise you to use uh, certificates and encrypted communication. Now, what you can see here on the left-hand side is you now have some, some objects under root. Uh, there is device set, there is PLC1, and there is server and server interfaces. So like I mentioned to you before, I left the semantic standard interface there, and this is this PLC1. Uh, and here on the PLC1, uh, we have all different things that are exposed on our PLC. This is the standard semantic interface. This is the tick box that is there in the properties uh, that you can check or, or leave unchecked. And as you can see, this is namespace equal free. So now if I wanted to access some data from data blocks global, I have all my global data blocks here and I can see my variables. If I drag and drop it, I can see, okay, yeah, this variable uh, value is false. If I go to my data blog, uh, I go online with this PLC. Yeah, this corresponds. Double click to toggle it. Yes, should change to true. Does it change to true? Yeah, it does. And this basically proves, yeah, it's working fine. But we also added uh, a server interface. So the server interfaces can be found here. As you can see, it's a different namespace, namespace at uh, namespace four. I only expose a single variable, uh, but the same one, as you can see, is true as well. So it will depend on your requirements, whether you want to expose everything or just the things that you actually want to expose. And I would say probably 
uh, exposing via a server interface uh, is more conscious choice because you, you're not just saying, yeah, 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 you need anything, it's all day. You're just saying, yeah, you are allowed to access these things and these things only, and they are exposed on this server interface, okay? There are also some things um, around diagnostics in, in OPC UA as well. And if you go to document, uh, you can add yourself different different document types. Uh, if you remember, I mentioned GDS push. If you wanted to, you have the GDS push view here available. But what is interesting, I think, is the server diagnostics view. So you can add this document. It will come here under documents. And if you go to server diagnostics, we can select from the servers that we are connected to, and we can actually uh, see what's going on with these servers, how many sessions are connected. If you know that you have three clients connected, you can see are there only three sessions. What you will see sometimes is that maybe you have one client but multiple sessions. This means that you're doing something wrong because rather than establishing one session and getting data you'd like, you may be establishing one session per every data point that you want to like to connect and this will obviously uh, hammer the performance of your uh, of your of your PLC at the end of your OPC UI server. You can see all the different settings here. As you can see, uh, the minimum supported sample rate is what we had in the properties there. It tells us, yeah, it's it's 1,000 milliseconds. Then you have things around session diagnostics. So you can select all the sessions that are, are present currently, and you can see what's going on here. But again, this is uh, more of a deep dive into diagnostics, I would say. Uh, the basics of diagnostics of, of, of you know OPC UA is doing things like, yeah, if your client can't connect, get yourself something more generic like the UA expert, try to connect from it at where your client is connecting. If you can't, then I would say try to connect directly to the POC. If you can't connect with UA expert directly to your POC, this will either be down to you putting wrong details, maybe your PC having wrong configuration, or you so simply not downloading the hardware config of your PLC and not enabling the uh, the OPC UA server. Now, if you can connect from this place, but you couldn't where you were somewhere else, then it will most likely be down to your network. And these are the diagnostics that, that you will need to do yourself. Um, other things, you know, like I said, if it finds a server but you can't connect, make sure that your user details are, are right, that your certificates are correct, uh, that you actually enable these policies, that you downloaded all these different uh, users, etc. But like I said, in this video, I just wanted to quickly show you how to set up OPC UA server for very basic communication. If you are interested in this topic, uh, just let us know uh, and, and we might provide more videos around maybe security of UA, uh, of OPC UA or around deeper dive into, into the diagnostics with OPC UA. Uh, other topics you could cover, I guess, uh, OPC UA server on the S7-1200, OPC UA client on the 1500. Just let us know in the comments. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>